Hi, I'm Beryl, and in today's episode, I am not cooking, yay! Instead, I am ordering delivery, and we are getting Thai food. I'm making this video in partnership with Grubhub, a food delivery service, and the idea is that oftentimes we don't try new cuisines because we don't really know what to order. Lucky for me, and all of you, I have a large community that wanted to help out. So today, with the help of Pat, Ben, Cami, Chawa, and May, we chose a Thai restaurant in my neighborhood and they are going to be choosing the dishes that I will eat today. Grubhub did also give me a coupon code for $5 off an order of $15 or more if you use my name Beryl at checkout because there's a lot more to Thai food than just Pad Thai. Food's here. Let's begin. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name's May. I am currently living in the UK, but I was born and raised in Bangkok, Thailand. Hi, my name's Ben. I live in Boulder, Colorado, but I was born in Thailand and I'm Thai American. For an appetizer, I have chosen fish cakes, which in Thai is called Thot Man Bla. It's a curried fish cake that's fried and served with a sweet and spicy sauce and atat, which are Thai quick pickles. I would say this is a classic household dish. Street food vendors would sell this, but equally you would find it on the menu in higher end restaurants as well. Fish cakes, which just at first blush, it um, doesn't look like the fish cake that I know of, which is kind of more the Korean fish cake, which are a little bit more pale in color. These are vibrant. Dippy dip in the sauce. kind of chewier than I expected it to be. Although, fish cakes are kind of chewy now that I think about it. The sauce I feel like is, I'm not gonna say bussin', just kidding. That would have been embarrassing. Very gingery. I like it. I'm Pat, born and raised in Bangkok, Thailand. Hi, my name is Chawan from Bangkok, Thailand. Hi, my name is Gamon Wan, or you can call me Cami. I'm from Lampoon, Thailand. For appetizer, I have chosen Isan sausage. It is a fermented pork sausage from the northern east of Thailand. It's full of flavor from different kind of herbs mixed together, and it's one of my favorite sausage since I was young to eat with sticky rice. It's one of the very common food that you can find anywhere in Thailand. I just remember trying it for the first time when my grandma bought it from the food cart auntie that happened to pass by our house and I can still remember her smile to this day. It's definitely one of my family's favorite snacks. <laughs> Literally everybody pretty much wanted me to try this. Sausage, bit of ginger, bit of the onion. Mmm, whoa! I really like those. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it with the chili. It just feels like the right thing to do. Oh. <coughs> I mean, I guess it enhanced the flavor a little bit. The sausage has a ton of spice in it, not including that red chili. It's really, really flavorful. I'm having this room temperature and it, like the consistency is also kind of an ideal sausage consistency, if that's even a thing. I think having it with the ginger was super interesting. The ginger is actually pretty mild and it might be because it's so thin, but together, it was just a really, really nice bite. Something I probably would have never ordered on my own. I, I loved it, yeah. <laughs> From the salads, I picked crispy catfish or yam pladuk fu. So I think a lot of people probably skip over the salad section on Thai menus, but you should definitely not skip over this section. So paduk is catfish and fu means to kind of like puff up. Anything called yam is essentially made with chili, lime, sugar, and uh, fish sauce. And in this case, it's combined with the deep fried and flaked fish. It is like my mom's go-to menu when she wants to go and tie it, but I would always be the one asking her if I could take it instead because I really love it. It's also something that you don't really see on menus outside of Thailand very often, just because the preparation process is a little bit more involved. I'm very excited to try this catfish salad. Another fan favorite, it seems. Also, 
It reminds me of my mango episode when I had this dish that had ribbons of mango. Like, ribbons of mango, but much better ribbons of mango than the ones that I was able to make in my own episode. Also, I was expecting the catfish to be like a piece of catfish and not this dried crumbled catfish, so I, I'm just surprised. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is like, when you talk about, I'm like smiling, like this is the kind of dish that's making me smile. It is sweet and it's, okay, hold on, I'm a little excited. It is sweet and it is spicy and salty and crunchy. I mean, it's all the textures, all the flavors, and it's mango. So, yum. It just feels like a vibrant summer dish, like when it's really hot outside and you want something spicy and cold. If you're wondering if you should get this, the answer is yes. A thousand times yes. <laughs> Sorry, that was cheesy. <laughs> I feel like I was getting proposed to. A thousand times yes, mango salad. I've also picked another one of my all-time favorite, tom kha gai. It's a coconut milk-based soup with a galan gao flavor up front. Thai food is very, very big on like herbs. And I feel like this dish is a really good showcase of all of that. Many people mistaken uh, galan gao with the ginger. It has a similar look or shape, but it's very different in flavor. I kind of noticed that this um, soup is getting more popular um, in Western world and, and that makes me really happy because oh, the flavors is amazing. I'm very excited to try this soup because there are a lot of flavors in here that I'm not very familiar with, especially goengul, which I have read a bit about now. I got it with tofu and the tofu is very nice. For a coconut soup, it doesn't feel like you're having a bowl of coconut milk, which I think was kind of what I was expecting, something a little bit sweeter. In fact, I find it to be actually a lot more savory than I was expecting. I don't know if I'm really tasting galangal in this soup. I'm definitely tasting lemongrass and I'm definitely tasting coconut. I think maybe I got a little scared. On the spice levels here, I was able to order, you know, mild, medium, spicy, and then Thai spicy. Thai spicy is a very special kind of spicy. And I think I just played it a little safe. And so I think I just wish the soup was a little spicier but it's also like a beautiful soup and coconut milk is always really good when you're eating other spicy foods, so, you know. So from the noodle section, I have chosen um, drunken noodles or kui tiao ki mao. It's traditionally made with white rice noodles, um, some sort of meat, vegetables, Thai basil, and it's all stir fried in um, oyster sauce, fish sauce, and soy sauce. And supposedly it was so spicy that uh, people would eat it as a cure for a hangover, hence its name. Growing up, we made it quite a lot using spaghetti noodles um, instead of the traditional rice noodles. And I would say that's quite a common thing for Thai people to do. Um, we love our fusion food. I've seen drunken noodles on a menu many, many times before, but never did I know that they were supposed to help with a hangover. I love thick noodles like this. They're just really fun to eat, just like a big noodle. These noodles are a little bit sweeter than they are spicy, but I still think they're like, bing bong boom. What, no wait, what's it, bing bong? Is that like the new thing? <laughs> what are the kids saying these days when they like something, I don't know. Rather than treat a hangover, I feel like I want these noodles before the hangover, like when I'm still drunk and just like, like a big bowl of these kind of like salty, spicy, sweet, carbalicious, big noodles. Like this feels like, perfect drunk food to me. <laughs> and I mean that in a really endearing way. The one thing about these noodles is like, you cannot refrigerate them. The second they get anything below room temperature, they just become a brick. So like eat them while you can, you know? From curry, I have Shosen Panang Curry. It's a coconut milk based variant of aromatic red curry with choice of protein. Beef or chicken are the more popular choice for Panang Curry in Thailand. 
I think Penang curry is very easy to eat. It's smooth, savory, little nutty, and not very spicy. I went with chicken. Actually, that's it. That's all I got. I went with chicken. <laughs> this sauce is good. The lemongrass flavor is super lovely in this, and I just feel like the whole dish is like bouncy and light and flavorful in all the right ways, but it's just like my mouth is just like, we want more. I love it. I've never had this before. I mean, I've never had most of these before. Also like broccoli soaked in a sauce. This is a simple pleasure. It's so good. I love this one. I would order this again. So from the curry section, I have chosen gangpa or jungle curry. Um, so sour curries are curries that don't have coconut milk. It actually has a tamarind-based broth, which is a little bit more of a rural style of cuisine. It's made of chili paste, sometimes prawn or some protein, and a bunch of vegetables. And it has a really different kind of taste profile from other styles of Thai curries that most people are more familiar with. Instead, it's very, it's very light, it's very herbaceous, very refreshing. Just one of those dishes that make you feel great after eating it. It's the final dish. Cha -cha. Second camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this dish is a perfect example of why it can be really difficult to order new things off a menu. This dish is described as jungle curry, mixed vegetables with choice of protein. Like, that really isn't giving me much, especially if I don't know what it is to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna hazard a guess that this is water spinach and carrot. <laughs> I think I was right. It's got like a sourness, which I think is coming from the tamarind. There's also this paste, which I think this is also tamarind paste. I need to, I did too good of a job plating this. I, I can't get into it right now. My expectation for the Thai food curries tends to now be coconut milk and lemongrass, but because this is sour and spicy, it's very much up my alley. I love sour foods and I just think it's really interesting and it's, it's just really different and something that I would have never known to order. Good shrimp. If you're looking for a different type of curry, this jungle curry is amazing because it's gonna defy your expectations of what a Thai curry is. <laughs> Everything that I ate today and all of the other recommendations are going to be in the description. Grubhub did also give me a coupon code for $5 off an order of $15 or more if you use my name Beryl at checkout so that you can also have a Thai feast at home for a little less money. <laughs> Let me know what other cuisines you would like me to try in this delivery series, and I will see you all in my next video. 